Welcome to an ongoing series on my channel where I try to teach you something about DaVinci Resolve as fast as I can. Today is macros. They're not easy. And we've talked about them a couple of times already, but using images and templates is not an easy thing to do. Let's learn how to use them and export them to share with others. Let's say you have this really cool advanced logo stick, like this. And you want this to go on the edit page, but every time you try to put it out as a macro and put it onto someone else's computer or even in a different timeline, your image doesn't work. It just has a red screen saying media offline. That's because media in nodes only take the stuff from your media pool. What you have to do is use a load node. So just delete your media in and put in a loader in its place. It's going to bring up a little pop up asking you where you want to go. Let's go ahead and close that for now because we can pull it up again right here. Let's go up to your media pool and let's right click on your image and reveal in file location. So open file location. Click up here and just copy. We can minimize that now and we can paste that into there. And it brings us to our folder location if we press enter. Click on your asset. I'm using asset 3PNG. And then we can just bring it in there. It's going to bring it in as an image sequence because of the way that images work. So what you maybe want to do is rename it to something else. I've just quickly renamed it to use icon. So we're just going to copy this file path again just in case it doesn't bring it up and browse and we're here so that's good so just find that new uh, name which is called use icon and when you load it in it should bring it in just fine if you have images that have uh, like numbers at the end of the names it will read it as if it's an image sequence and then try to put them all in the same thing which maybe works for some things but not what we're doing today so we can see it's working just fine we have our image loaded in and the animation works all the same so all we have to do now is export this for the edit page right no so when you actually use images for your macros, there's a small hiccup that you have to do uh, to make it actually work. So go into file name and delete everything except for the actual name of your image. All right, up to there. You then want to take this code that's on the screen right now, and I'm also going to put it down in the description, and put it directly in front of your file name and just paste it. This is going to tell it to read next to the settings file, look for that image. So if you release that now, it's going to not actually show anything. It's going to have everything in red and it's not going to be animating anymore. That's because you don't currently have this exported as a, as a macro. I have everything animating using my anim utility tool, which is now in reactor. Go check that out. But what we have to do is select everything that you want to actually animate or control in order. I don't really want anything to be controlled. I, I think the animation is just fine as is, but I'll select everything all at the same time. Right click any of the nodes and we'll just make it a macro and we can select things at random. I think maybe the size for transform is okay, and then maybe angle as well. And then I think everything else is pretty good. We can remove the value for that. And I think that looks good. Output is what we want there. Let's save this as my logo animation. You can obviously add as many controls as you want. This is just a quick example so that you don't have to be bored with all the little, little nitty gritty details I could get into. If you want to learn about how to ex export in utility macros in the future, let me know. I have not made a video on that yet, but if there's enough demand for it, I will happily make a video on that because it can be a little bit confusing. Let's go ahead and save this as a macro, not a group. Uh, I'm going to put it in my presets folder, just anywhere in the main folder. You can put that anywhere. I'm just putting it in my presets folder because that's where I have dedicated to make all my presets. We can close this now and we can hop into that folder and start getting that ready for saving it and exporting it for others. So I'm going to keep this folder handy and I'm just going to open up a new tab here and I'm just going to go to my macros, uh, my presets folder. Let's find the file that we just created. So this one right here. Let's go ahead and cut it and let's put it into an edit file like this. I'm going to actually use one in a different folder. I meant to put it in that folder, but let's go ahead and do that over here. I can put it into edit and this one is going to be a generator since it is creating an image. It's not taking anything in. It's not a text uh, overlay and it's not a transition. So it's just a generator file. Simple way to think about generators is does it create the image and it's not text? That is a generator file. If it takes in an image either as like a background from using an adjustment clip or by putting it directly on your clips and adjusting it that way. So let's go ahead and save it in here. I'm going to save it into my locations here and we'll just put it under animations. And we'll just do paste. And I just want to double check through all my files that I don't have anything accidentally hidden in those. So I don't accidentally have anything else adding into this as a duplicate. Okay, that looks great. 
You don't have to have all these extra folders in here. I have them in here just because this is my template folder. But since this is all that we really need, we can right click and we can zip this either with regular compression or with 7-zip. 7-zip just gives you the option to change the .zip at the end. Change this to my uh, cool logo animation and then we'll put .drfx at the end of that. That then creates an installable file that anybody can open up on any other computer, whether it be a Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever it is, even on iPad. But when we open this up and install it, it's gonna ask you to install like this. Didn't she sometimes will need a time to, some time to catch up. Now that we've installed it, if you take a look at where it's located, right here, my logo animation, and we try to open it, we'll see it still does not give us what we want. If we open it up, we still have the red. Let's fix that really quick. Let's go back to where we have this and open up edit and go back to where we saved it, back into animations. And let's take that image that we used and let's right click and copy it. Or you can do control C and then do a control V. And now it's in the same dot settings folder that the macro is. So now it's going to be reading it as if we're all together and it's going to be properly taking in the image to put into that loader file. Let's say you also made a really cool thumbnail for this as well. I just have this dummy thumbnail that I made uh, for a macro that I was creating as a demonstration for a future tool. And if we put this in here and we take the name of the settings file and then replace this name as that, this will now act as its thumbnail. So let's go ahead and export this once again and zip this, I mean, once again, and make it the exact same name. With 7-zip, it makes it pretty easy because if you name it the same thing, it'll just override the old one. If you want to, you can refresh it to feel a little bit safer about it. And then if you try to install it, it will say override this time. And then once it overrides it, we can delete this one, wait for DaVinci to catch up, and let's bring in our new logo file, and we can see our thumbnail is there, and we're bringing our logo file, and there may still be a problem. This, I think, is a bug, because it's not supposed to be detecting where it's coming from until you've actually made it a dot settings file. So if we come into Fusion, we will see it is still red, even though our image is packaged with it. Don't worry, this is actually pretty easy to fix. What we have to do is there's a couple of ways to do it. There are tools out there to convert this from a macro to a group, or we can do it the old fashioned way, which we'll do real quick. We can copy this, open up your text editor of choice. I'm, I'm gonna use my VS code and we'll just paste this. All the way back up at the top, we will have the option to set the operator. Let's change this to be a group operator and let's access the files inside. What we have to do is copy this you can do that with a control C or a right click copy and reset the node. We don't want to select anything. We would just want to paste back in what we just had in there and press enter. And now our file is loaded correctly. We can close this again. And just to demonstrate the other way to do this, there are tools out there that allows you to instantly turn this into a macro or operator. Sometimes it'll toggle it immediately and detect which one it is. Or sometimes you'll have to choose either turn into macro, turn into group. So I have one built into a future tool, but all we have to do is come into here and change macro type, and there we go. Does all that for us. Let's go back to the edit page, and we can see our animation is looking really swell. But we wanna actually have this saved as the default for all of our future macros, because if we bring in a new one, it's gonna have our same problem that we just were having. So let's go ahead and export this again and make sure that this works a-okay. We can right click, go to settings, save as. So I'm gonna put this back in where I've been keeping it before. Make sure you click on the name so that it keeps the name at the same and just click on replace. And then we can go out to the edit page. We can either disable this one or delete it. If you feel safe enough, you can delete it. And we can zip this up once again. All right, refresh it to feel a little bit safer and let's install this one again, overriding the old one. Wait for DaVinci to catch up. We can see our cool thumbnail and we can even see the preview is showing that our logo is working correctly. Let's show this on a different timeline real quick. This is a uh, testing timeline that I use to build out a bunch of my tools that I'm working on. If we come into here and bring in our logo animation, we'll see it works just the same as it did on the other timeline. This is even a different project and it works exactly how it's supposed to. And we can control the size, and the angle of this, all we want. So that's how you can export your macros as a DRFX, which allows you to include images and thumbnails to share with anybody in the world. You can even sell them really quick and easy. 
If you liked this video, but actually don't fully understand everything about macros, I do have the very first episode right here in this playlist. You can watch all, this, all the videos coming up 